Hello everyone, my name is Ivan Astroumov. Uh, I am from National Aviation University and I'm a part of a navigation team and uh, let me introduce to you our results in uh, cooperative navigation of personal electronic device this formation movement. As you know, uh, in our modern life, we have a lot of personal electronic devices and uh, each people is a round of multiple different devices. Uh, we can begin from mobile phones, we can use tablets, we can use uh, uh, smart watches, uh, some glasses and what is uh, quite important here that inside of each of such kind device we have a group of sensors um, which usually includes three accelerometers, three gyroscopes and three magnetometers. All of these sensors uh, give us a huge possibility to measuring acceleration orientation of device in the space and uh, of course uh, uh, the stress vector of uh, intensity of magnetic field and uh, this is uh, quite important because um, if you consider for example airplane Boeing 747 uh, and on board 200 persons with uh, at least one personal electronic device and it means we have a huge group of sensors uh, already present on board of airplane and why we cannot use it for airplane support okay we have more than 200 accelerometers more than 200 gyroscopes and uh, let's try to uh, evaluate how we can help with this huge amount of uh, sensors to support navigation possibility of airplane and this is the main goal of uh, our research uh, common personal electronic device uh, includes uh, CPU memory sensors Install, sensors installation and some wireless communication module and this is the main scheme of typical PET um, equipment that's why CPU and memory is a core of any PET uh, then we have sensors and uh, we can use different types of sensors inside of each PET uh, it is accelerometer, gyroscopes, magnetometers and the GNSS as well, receiver. Uh, if you look on communication modules, uh, each of these sensors uh, is equipped with uh, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, GSM and uh, 5G support. It helps to connect, connect uh, smart bracelets to the mobile phone for data sharing it helps to localize mobile phone in our Wi-Fi network that's why different uh, sensors can be used for uh, communication uh, our device with uh, some kind of networks if you represent um, formation of uh, mobile phones as a network. Uh, we can represent each uh, mobile phone as a node and uh, distance between uh, mobile phone information for information uh, as edge. Uh, if you consider a simple Bluetooth technology, okay, um, each module with Bluetooth gives us possibility to measure a uh, power of a uh, Bluetooth signal and based on uh, power of the signal we can apply uh, a simple pass-loss uh, model to get a distance between 
uh, nearby uh, mobile phone. That's why each mobile phone has a particular vector of distances to nearby mobile phones. In another approach, in another scheme, uh, during the connection to the Wi-Fi, we can uh, get measuring a distance between Wi-Fi router and our mobile phones. And if we have uh, different antenna installations of uh, Wi-Fi router with known precisely position of these points, we can also use a path loss model to get a distance and then based on these distances we can get a relative location of each mobile phone. That's why it is not a too big deal to measure location of personal electronic device, location in a formation of this personal electronic device. And in this case usually we can use a quite simple formula which is a uh, formula for distance uh, between two points. Uh, th this one for case of three-dimensional space and this one for horizontal plane. If we consider, for example, airplane or uh, road traffic or just uh, bus or train location, it, it's uh, quite simply uh, understand that uh, all mobile phones uh, are located at one plane approximately within plus min minus one or two meters. That's why uh, we can apply quite simple formula for two dimension uh, navigation to get uh, precise location of each uh, personal electronic device information. Okay, and then uh, we can use um, uh, weighted least square method uh, to get a location of each uh, personal electronic device. Uh, first of all, uh, we need to uh, understand um, apparels for using formation of personal electronic devices. If we uh, measure location of each pad in our formation, it means that uh, we need to use at least uh, some uh, perils values for number of uh, personal electronic devices. And in this case, if we consider a case of horizontal navigation, uh, for uh, five mobile phones, uh, we need to use at least uh, eight uh, mobile phones. Uh, from 10 to get uh, possibility uh, of uh, measuring uh, smartphones uh, coordinates. However, in case if we have, uh, for example, 100 mobile phones, okay, we need uh, at least approximately 198 uh, measured distances between mobile phones to be possible uh, getting location of each mobile phone. Uh, in the graphical case, uh, these perils can be represented in the following form. For two-dimensional space, it is represented as a green line and for three-dimensional it is a red one. That's why all of this space, uh, it is uh, possible perils for getting uh, coordinates of each uh, mobile phone information. However, we have uh, some problems uh, because uh, usually when we count uh, location, we do not know uh, coordinates of each mobile phone. That's why um, we use one of mobile phones as a reference point for getting location of all other mobile phones around. That's why in this case uh, our system can be rotated uh, around our reference point. And in this case we can uh, count uh, angle of rotation of our system uh, based on uh, 
known some other important data. data. As example, location of another mobile phone or location of magnetic field uh, uh, sensor. Uh, then, if you know location of each mobile phone and uh, we know uh, gyroscopic data, orientation of each mobile phone in the network, uh, it gives us a possibility to transform measured acceleration to acceleration of some particular reference frame uh, allocated with body of aircraft. And uh, it means that uh, we've got multiple acceleration measurements and we have multiple, for example, GNSS measurements as well. Uh, then uh, we need to find a way how we can mix all of this data together uh, to get precisely uh, location of a particular value. And in this case, uh, uh, weighted, weighted method um, is the most suitable one. In our example uh, for numerical study, uh, we use a passenger cabin of Boeing 747-400, uh, which uh, includes uh, 106 uh, seats of economic class. Uh, okay. 90 seats of economy plus and 52 seats of business book class okay and we consider only a part of these seats from aircraft for our computer simulation uh, then uh, we uh, used a random model to to generate a location of pad within uh, the space of each seat and here you can see um, results of a uh, length of communication line simulation uh, from number of uh, ages in the network for different number of uh, operational uh, personal electronic devices within uh, our small cabin part. And uh, we've got the following results. Uh, we consider different scenarios uh, for all for each of these scenario we simulate a different uh, condition of the network and then we try to estimate coordinates uh, of each path within the network to estimate a performance of a collaborative navigation approach and uh, for case of uh, 50% of seats uh, is equipped with personal electronic device in the in their one network, um, and uh, with maximum communication line in five meters is supported. We've got uh, the following configuration of network which uh, shows us that we have quite uh, enough data to get precise localization of each pad uh, in their formation. This is the first one. And the second one, we have enough data for sharing acceleration and representation of this acceleration in their uh, somebody reference frame uh, located with uh, uh, aircraft. Uh, the main conclusions uh, are presented on slide. Uh, thank you for attention. If you have any questions, I will be glad to answer.